Good morning. Welcome to Drax Bites. Today we're going to talk a bit about the concept of how you start a DJ business. You know, so many people take on to start a DJ business and they don't do any of the basic homework. Here's the steps. One, two, three, four. Write a business plan. That means detail all of your expenses in a spreadsheet. I know. I've talked about it before. But we want to talk a bit about things that are important to having a successful business. Knowing what your service costs to provide, your COS, cost of service, is every bit as important as it is for any other business. Just because we're a service doesn't make any difference. Still have equipment costs that have to be amortized, recovered, and paid for, maintained, replaced. You have music. Music is a consumable asset. It's not a capital cost like a piece of equipment is, but it is an operating cost, and it's a big one. Uh, yes, you can consider a library a capital investment, but you really have to think a bit about of the thousand or so songs you'll acquire this year, how many will you still play 10 years from now? Very, very few, I think. I don't see today's current artists packing stadiums in their 70s. That's because music has become disposable. It's typically not even made with instruments much anymore. It's made with drum machines. It's made with synth loops. It's made with vocalized loops, beat loops, guitar loops, bass loops. This is the state of music. It's why it all sounds homogenous. You know, growing up as a kid, you used to be able to travel around the country, and music was wonderful because radio was the vehicle. You see, cars back in the day didn't have CDs and didn't have satellite radio and didn't have cassette decks or, well, I did have an 8-track deck at one point. But for the most part, you listen to music, you listen to radio. This even predates FM. You listened on the good old AM radio, and you heard a sound and a character of a city. Yes, you heard the pop songs, but you heard the songs that were popular in that market more than the ones that were tracking out on the Billboard Top 100. But then along came syndication, co-location, all the varied mechanisms that synchronized American radio, homogenized it. Now you go to any city in America and turn on the adult contemporary station, they all sound alike. We don't want to sound alike. So as your DJ business, are you just playing the top hits or are you digging deep and playing recurrence? Are you breaking songs, actually introducing your audiences to songs that haven't been on the radio that you think have what it takes? I'd really suggest you do. You know, in this new AM slot, we're going to get a lot more opportunity to talk about a lot more things. So if there's something you want to talk about, put it down below in the comments and we'll make a show about it in future days future weeks to come. One of the things we'd love to talk about is operating your business. We're talking about music. Let's come back to music. Every DJ should have licensed music, period. Absolutely every single one. If you don't have licensed music, quit. Get out of the business or buy licensed music from licensed pool providers. And there's not a ton of them. There's about four. Four in the entire industry that are actually licensed to provide you music for commercial use to make money from playing at events, public or private, doesn't matter. It's still commercial. So coming back to the business plan, okay, you've got capital equipment, you've got your equipment, you've got your music, which is an operating expense or called OPEX. Your phone, that's an OPEX. Your internet service is an OPEX. Your salary is an OPEX. Yes, you heard that right. You build into your business plan a salary. What do you need to make to have a life, to pay for your rent, your mortgage, your bills, 
to have vacation, to have paid sick days, to not be subject to the man, to be able to have health insurance. You see, if you're a member of ADJA, there it is right up here. There you go. You can join ADJA and get awesome, awesome health insurance at super affordable prices. Now, I'm not saying you got to use our health care, but it is great health care. You want to have that. See, these are the key elements that real businesses have so that they operate like a real business and so that the owners and employees of that business are treated like real employees, treated like real business owners, and that the company is run like a real business. You want to have things like convention attendance. That would be educational expenses. That would include buying DVDs, attending workshops. And I got to tell you, if it comes down to going to a convention or attending a workshop, I'm going to tell you to do a workshop. Workshops will give you the biggest bang for your buck in anything you do. Why? Because you're going to learn skills that you don't have. Now, just don't attend any workshop that somebody tells you to attend because it's ultra great. Tend, attend the workshop that's going to focus on the things that you suck at most, the things you're worst at, the things that you have the greatest opportunity to improve in, because those will make the greatest difference in your performance and how you operate your business, which will translate into more demand, which will translate into more business, which will allow you to then charge more money. Yes, folks, most DJs don't charge enough money because they're not running a real business. So on your spreadsheet, you're going to detail down the side all of the items, everything that you use in the performance and delivery of your service. In the next column, you're going to list all of the things that it costs and roll that up into an annualized cost. You'll understand in a few minutes why. Because when you have those annualized costs, it's going to help us really determine what your price should be. You see, price is not a magic number. You don't get it by saying, what does everybody else charge? Calling up people on the internet. And you see, when you have a business plan, it doesn't matter what any other DJ charges. It's what you charge based on your business plan. So you take and you put the annualized cost for every one of those items that we've listed in the left-hand column. Now you go down to the bottom and you hit sum that will add up those annualized costs uh, times it by 0.25 or 0.15. That's going to get you the amount of money that is 15% of that total expenses. That's the next line item. That's your profit. Now you take it on the next line and sum those. That's your total business operating expense, including profit, that needs to be what's called your gross revenue. That needs to be the amount you make gross. Now, it's pretty simple to set your price. How many events do you want to do a year? How many Saturdays? Divide that into that number, and that's your price. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, here's another easy-to-do thing. You see, I like to roll taxes into that because when you take that gross and that's your price, that's untaxed. So what I like to do is after the expenses, after the profit, I take my estimated tax from prior years, take that percentage, and multiply that in there. Now, if you're a business, you're going to have 7.5% of it right off the top of your, your end result that's going to be called payroll taxes or FICA tax. It's going to be what you pay for Social Security for yourself as a business. If you have employees, then those expenses would be itemized farther up with your workers' comp expense, your payroll taxes, uh, the, which would be your portion, the 7.5% that you would also pay for them, all the way down to the bottom and take your profit at whatever percentage you want, 0.25, add that to your total costs. Now take your average annualized uh, income and take 15% of that and add that because that'll be your Social Security. Now take what your annual income tax is and develop that as a percentage. Add that in, that in the next line down. Now sum that and that becomes your operating expense. That is the total cost of your business 
Now divide that number by the number of events you want to do, and that is how much you need to charge to pay all your bills, pay your taxes, have vacation. Yes, one of the line items above should be your income for a vacation. You should have that built in. Uh, my choice, I did 42 events a year. Why? That still gave me 10 weeks vacation. 10 weeks with nothing to do. 10 free weekends to have fun. Because you need balance. You need to have a great life. And part of a great life is having balance and doing things more than working every Saturday, Sunday, and Friday. Hopefully these things will help you get started in developing your business plan. I'm Drax, and we'll see you next week bright and early. Please put your comments down below if there's a topic you want to talk about in more detail. Put them down below. Put your questions down below, and we'll be glad to answer those in our next show. Thanks again for joining us, and have a great day. 